Hello friends of the church, namaste. I am here to pleasure you with another video of a car which is sad and I am here to make it less sad. Uh, I may have my work cut out. First job I've got to do is to like move all this stuff and get this out of the way um, and then we stand a chance of like moving the car. Uh, this is going to be a bit tough this, uh, might have to get the old ah, muscles out. Let's go! <sighs> <sighs> super heavy and it's got a flat tire so moving that by hand was really hard and there it is um yeah, I, right let's get the camera in and let's have a look because i really haven't even looked at this thing yet so let's see what we've got to work with like uh, i think is going to be the trend let's start with this bit here i've been told that the keys are in the car and there's actually a logbook with this and some other paperwork and stuff so we'll have a bit of a look at that as well and see what we're dealing with because that is a dateless plate so i don't know what year the car actually is could be anything uh right does this open okay noticed i'm wearing my gloves straight away this time another warning triangle do not buy high mileage mercedes that have been laid up for donkey's years Standard, less rust there, that's good. Oh, lovely. Plenty of greenery, but you know, might be something under there. This is, this is, I think, where I don't know, maybe to get your golf clubs in or something. Uh, well, we can we can put some touch up on that, no one would ever notice. What's in the bag? Another bag. This looks, I mean. Pretty tidy in here, isn't it? Essentially. Nothing too bad at all. Oh dear, what's all that? Oh god, what's all this? Oh, a spare wheel. That might come in handy later. Oh, hello. Another plate. That's the same thing. Okay. So, what's all this here? That is water. And that looks <sighs> pretty sad. Okay, I mean... That's potentially going to clean up all right in there, isn't it? No car parts though, no telltale signs of any huge issues to worry about. So we'll close the lid on that. As you can see, this is a 230 CE. The CE stands on Mercedes for three doors or two doors, actually. Sorry, it's because it's got a boot. It's a coupe. That's what the CE stands for, coupe. And the 230 means 2.3 litre, which is fun, isn't it? Oh, a bit of rust there, look. Oh, oh, oh. I can, you know when you tap something and you can hear bits falling, that's never good, is it? That tyre there, look, with an alloy wheel. There's another tyre there with an alloy wheel. They look like they've got air in, that's exciting. This, I don't know if you can see this. I mean, that's okay. I really love painting, uh, not might do something with that might just not who knows depends what the rest of the car's like another sunroof what is it with mercedes and sunroofs Ooh. what does that do right well not as not as dusty and hideous as the other one very nice door God, look at that not coming away at the edges like the other one 
some water if we get thirsty. There's some nice spiders. Uh oh. What do we have? It oh, oh god, okay. Right. That looks to me like a well it's a distributor cap isn't it but looks like a brand new one <gasps> yep smells pretty brand new why is that there i wonder are we going to find this difficult oh my god i've just seen something even worse it's an automatic oh well look at that stereo that is not, that's i mean that's probably worth what i paid for the car itself god that one actually Click clock clicks, click clocks. <laughs> the smell isn't great, not as bad as the other one, but not great. Fantastic headlining again. Interior, I mean, you can see quite a bit of wear over there, can't you? That's not amazing. Oh, look at this! Okay, maybe that seat is that seat broken? Okay, can we? Why can't I get that armrest down? Okay, we'll have a look at that. Look at your back seats, though. That's travelling in comfort, that, isn't it? What's this do? Nothing. I'd I mean, I'm no expert, but I'd imagine for an MOT that would have to lock into place. That's something we'll have to have a look at. Um, I don't really want to get inside it. Let's have a look on the other side. Look at this. Someone spilt some milk in between the glass and the other bits. Oh my God, look. Oh, I don't know if you can see in there. Look at these headrests. They are sort of set in. That looks like they're going to pop out. <laughs> That'd be cool. All right, as you can see, I cannot get down there. There's no chance I can fit down there. But, you know, it's got a door. It's another two wheels. There's not a lot I can tell you about that. Paintwork, oh, it's a bit of rust there. Oh god, there's a bit more rust there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pr press too hard on that one. But yeah, there's not a bit more rust there. It, it, it doesn't matter about the rust. Paintworks, you know, it's just the front that's a bit. Maybe it's been a write-off at some point. No, it's just a bit of fading, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna have to be brave here and jump in. Was there any spiders? Did we see any spiders? What's in there? No, no spiders. No. Okay, let's see if, if we do see any. Oh. Let's see if we can be friends with them. It's not that bad, is it, you know? Yes! Oh. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a key. Which is a fantastic start, isn't it, to have a key? Glove box. Glove box. Okay. MJI4330. This... 230 CE with only only eight former keepers. It's pretty good, isn't it? Only eight people have wanted to own this car. Um, ah, right, yeah. You, so, see, I always know that you can, you can spot things a mile away. This vehicle has been salvaged because the estimated cost of commercial repair was more than the value of the vehicle. So. At some point, she has been written off, boys and girls. But that's okay. It's on the road again now. It might have just been a little bump. You know, who knows? It might have just been a little bump. And, uh, right. So, date of first registration. First of the second of 1999. Now, I'm telling you now, that ain't right. Uh, it's not a 1999 car. They didn't make these in. They didn't make these in 1999. It's older than that. What that must be, which is why the, it's got a dateless reg on it, is this is a Irish import, um, and it was imported in 1999 in Ireland when they possibly moved over or something, and uh, uh, from Ireland and bought the car with them. Um, and it's the car's going to be much older than that. I'm sure it is. This is like tons and tons of service history. This is 
is going to make some interesting reading. I might have a little read of this at some point. Take it home with me. Read it in bed, you know, a nice bit of nighttime reading. What do normal people read in bed? Fifty Shades of uh, Mercedes Benz Service History. Does it give me any clues on the actual reg date of the car? Reg date blank. Reg date blank. Blank, blank, blank. Reg date blank. Okay. Not a problem. We'll decipher that. All I have to do is put the registration number into an online um, thing in my jig and it'll tell me, hopefully. Uh, so that's that. Uh, so the mileage on the car, it says 180 489, which is barely run in for a Mercedes, I've been told. Um, I think the battery's dead. Okay. It's in neutral. It's in neutral. So how am I going to get to the other side? Why don't we have a look under the bonnet first and see what's under there and see uh, if it's easy enough to throw a battery in and potentially I could climb over onto this side and maybe bump it out and try and get a little bit more room down there or I could put a ratchet strap around the Passat and just sort of drag it out in a Neanderthal kind of way. Uh, but I don't want to do that because this is a precious vehicle. Um, historic, some might say. Right, let's get amongst it. Come on! Oh, oh this is very wet. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on. Oof! Ho -ho. That opened up a lot easier than the other one. Ah. I'm telling you, it's not as bad as the other one under here. Let's uh, have a look. So first of all, it's got a battery with a handle, and I mean, that looks a bit newer than the other one. It's got a bit of cobwebs and stuff, but, you know, what good car hasn't? Uh, not more space under here, isn't there? Not more space. This doesn't look very appealing, does it? Looks appealing off. Looks like a bit of uh, weepage there, which is great, isn't it? That's what you need. Keeps in. That looks like brand new. That's exciting. Um, can I get to the oil? Let's have a look. Let's just pop you here on this battery. Oh shit! Ah, that, ah, whoops. Oh, right. What have we got? We have got. Is that 1040? It's 10, 1030. Smells like uh, petrol as well, which isn't good. Uh, okay. Is that a bumblebee? No, it's not. Right, let's have a look under this thing here. Oh. This one's a lot more attached than the other one as well, which is good, isn't it? So it looks like maybe nobody's been messing about with it. I don't know why that distributor cap is in there. Is this bolted down? Do I have to unbolt it as well as do these clips? Surely not. But I think I've got to undo these nets. That seems like a huge amount of work. Um, Right, let's do that, because before I start anything up, I just want to make sure nothing's crawled up here and made a little nest in there, and it's not going to just do any bad things to the engine before I try and crank her over. So, let's get my little spanner. Got it.
Okay, we've got a quite a clean air filter and another one of these bloody carb type things. That's annoying, isn't it? Okay, should we dump a battery in it and see what happens? See if we can set another alarm off and scare the crap out of me. Let's go. Hey! Hey! God! Get out! Get in. Okay. Eat. Oh, it's one way round. Put the battery at the front. I can't get the stupid thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're going to be so strong. Luckily for you guys, though, I am. Right. Okay. Okay, so. Place yourselves, and let's see as well if we can hear anything coming on like, I don't know, anything. Let's have a go. I just heard something pumpy, and no alarm. Okay. Welcome to this week's episode of What Works and What Doesn't. Coming to you live from the passenger seats. Whoa, horn works, okay. We have lights and I don't want to jinx it guys, but I'm sure. Whoa! Wow, it's it's made as an offering. Thank you, but but no thank you. Uh, okay, so what does it say? Doesn't look like there's any fuel in it. Doesn't look like there's anything else in it. Um, does this stereo work? Come on stereo, come to life. Oh, why do the stereos never work? <gasps> Does it work? Hello, cancel, no, don't cancel demo. Oh, I think it just wants to set it up. Dean and Vicky at bbc.co.uk. Oh my gosh, this oh is my it's God. real. The pictures didn't feel real. Being in the papers didn't feel real. Having your own past didn't feel real. Even if it doesn't, Shut up. Even if the car doesn't work, I mean, we could just come and sit in here and like have a dinner and that, couldn't we? You know, every day. Because it's got tunes, man. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, that's exciting. I mean, what else doesn't work? I mean, what else does work? Window. No way. Am I going to regret winding this window down? Quite possibly. I'm telling you, it's slow, but works what about that one no way wow i don't want to try the sunroof because sunroofs are bad news in my experience oh my god seen any good films lately and it's down uh, and let's do this one here for good measure. Ah. There's always one that doesn't want to work, isn't there? And it's that one. Okay. I'm definitely not going to touch that because I don't want to get covered in um, stuff. Oh. But yeah, that's really cool. So we're in neutral now. Let's knock her into park. Should we just see if she cranks over a touch? And we know what we're working with. does crank over and the battery feels very dead. Um, now I can't bump this out on the starter motor because it's an automatic, which means um, just it's just bad news in every shape and form. 
So I've got to try and work out now how I can get this car out of here because I can't really get uh, into that side and I can't really get into the engine bay to work. I kind of can, but I also kind of can't. And I kind of can't get my car here to put the jump leads on that battery because that battery sounds pretty dead even though it's been charged on charge all night. Um, what else? Uh, right, let's just crack on, eh? Let's make a plan and not stick to it. There's a really strong smell of petrol, which is in some ways good and in some ways slightly worrying. I could try the old fashioned thing of just pushing it back. Uh, how do we do that then? I'm going to take the handbrake off, which is on a pedal somewhere, weirdly, because it's a Mercedes, and stick it in neutral and then give it a push, eh? What have we got to lose? Oh, God. Doesn't want to move. I think it's time for the Passat. We have another one of these things. Now we've learned from Mercedes last time that that's a bad thing. What's that there? Some kind of, I don't know what that is. F, oh well, I don't know. Uh, nice easy access to the spark plugs. Let's have a look under this messy thing. Let's have a look under this messy thing. Let's have a look. No horror stories there. Okay, uh, what about in here? Oh, good grief, there is actually water in there. I don't know if you can see that moving. You can hear it though, can't you? Oh, that's good, isn't it? A little bit of, little bit of surface corrosion there. All these chassis legs look nice and straight and stuff. So whatever happened on the front of the car, which I'm assuming it was the front of the car, it must have been pretty light. And I'm only assuming the front of the car, yeah, dead straight, no damage inside here at all. It's probably just like a bumper and a wing or something, but you can tell the car's been painted at some point. So it probably had a bonnet and a couple of wings and maybe a bumper, but that's okay. Not a problem. Uh, Right then, I think the first thing we need to do is check for spark, because why is there a distributor cap in there? So I want to check for spark first, and I'm also going to do what we did last time and remove this thing, um, so I can see all the fuel related pipe work and stuff, and if we need to check if there's fuel, we so can just crack some of those. But we've got, you know, free connections. It does look all too familiar. Now I've had a quick look on the MOT history. Oh, that sun's bright. What a what a day. We, we seem to be blessed with the weather. Like it was hammering it down yesterday. Uh, yeah, the the car I think is 1990, like a G-Reg or something. 
Um, and it was last on the road in 2020. It was last MOT'd in 2020, but it only did a couple of hundred miles. So it hasn't been sat that long, which is kind of good, because if there is any petrol in the tank, it might not be that bad. It might be usable and the tank might be okay. So we could be on for a winner here. Uh, I'm going to crack a spark plug lead off. And I'm going to put the camera right next to that with a little um, screwdriver in it or something. I need you to watch for a spark. And then I'm going to watch it back and see if there was a spark. And then I know if there's a spark or not. Let's have a go. Now I hope you can see this. Let's use this one. No. This one as an indicator. Let me get something metal. This thing will do, hopefully. Now, if I balance all this cool stuff on here, if I uh, balance, yeah, there we go. Well, that battery is as dead as a dodo. Um, and you should have bought a new battery with me. Right, uh, I may need to pull this back a bit further so we can get the Passat in with a set of jump leads. Uh, I forgot I own this thing, which is exciting. Um, so, uh, uh, it's some kind of boosty machine. Something's clicking as well, which is weird. Right, let's try and look for the spark again. <laughs> okay, remember to keep your eyes on here, Danka. Okay, now I'm pretty confident there's no spark there. And I can smell a bit of fuel, I think. That's also... Yeah, I can smell a bit of fuel, even though it does smell quite bad, but... Um, yeah, I don't think there's a spark. There is another way of doing this another way of testing because I don't know how accurate that was then and I don't know if that's going to be choppy enough um I could pull a spark plug out or um I could just crank it holding onto the lead and give myself a huge belt up the arm so uh, my investigations obviously led me to this dizzy cap which I thought we'd have to do something with anyway because there was uh one in the passenger seat but on further inspection, it's not even bloody attached, and it's not got a little connector for the rotor arm. I mean, come on. Why didn't I check that first? Why didn't I check that first? Where's my cap gone? Right, let's get that installed, eh? Okay. Now these things, I mean, the first thing I do is just check that they look the same and I mean they look fairly similar I don't know about the same uh there's fortunately they've got numbers on them but usually I just match them up but I like to do my leads one by one because then there is no chance of making any mistakes so I say there's no chance of any mistakes this is this is me doing it of course so there's probably Maybe a hundred percent chance of mistakes. What number is that? Oh my god, do they all say one? Oh no, they don't know. Okay. So if that was that one, that's gonna be number three. Do they click? Should they click when they go in? I don't know. Ugh. Last one. Not last one. Ah. What's that one there? properly though and then this last one where did that go the coil wire oh, okay that's kind of in I don't know if they click but as you can see this has got that button thing there look can you see it which this one hasn't got and that's I'm telling you now it's gonna cause you it's gonna cause you some problems now 
if you can see the rotor arm, let me show you. This is what they call the rotor arm. And I'm just going to give my surface there a bit of a scratch because it looks like it's covered in, well, muck, stuff that it shouldn't be covered in. And I'm going to do the same there. Right, this is no good. This is not a good, you'll need a flathead. So I'm going to go and do that. Trust me, I've done it. I'm not going to show you because it's boring. Don't know if you can see there, but that looks now much shinier. So I'm going to pop this back on. That's how it goes. I mean, that's how the other one came off, didn't it? And then screw it back down and then we will try and fire it again. And like, I mean, I wasn't even really trying to fire it before. I was just trying to sort of check for a, a pulse, a spark. Um, but if this fixes it, sorry, I don't know where to put the bloody cameras in. I mean, if this was the issue all along, and this is why the car got parked up, and potentially they were going to do this, and they didn't, then this is going to be too... If this is it, this is going to be too easy. I'm telling you that now. It is, it's not going to be right, is it? Is there any way that this is supposed to go? Let's, get the, let's have a look at the old one without any wires on it and see how that would... If I was a rotor cap... How would I fit on? Is it keyed? Is that the key there? Right, I know what happens when it screws down, does it, like that? I just sort of pushes into place. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Very simple if that's the case, isn't it? Hmm, don't be too alarmist, but I'm not 100% sure this is actually the right distributor cap. on it's on kind of there's a few fundamental differences then sometimes on a rotor cap you have these little chucks missing out the side which is a key which tells you which way round it's supposed to go because one side has it one side doesn't it's nice and easy that one has something completely different but it's on there so you know whatever uh let's get you in a nice view and we'll twist on the key again and we'll see what happens eh? ready to give it a go i don't know what the petrol's going to be like in the car that might be absolutely rats, so even if it was getting petrol through, it might not run anyway. I might be sucking a load of crap up from the tank into the injection thingy, but I learned yesterday there's filters at that, so that should be easy enough to clean if that is the case. Um, and if we don't get any kind of boom, then that'll be the first place I'll look. Um, and I don't know how it's coming across on the camera there, but it's not a bad looking old whip this, is it? Same about the little marks here and there, but it's a pretty cool looking car, isn't it? I mean, I would say, I mean, I'm not really the ambassador of cool, but I like it. Anyway, let's see if she goes. Switch this thing, it's the on position. You on, connect that up there. And, Bring the noise. No noise. I felt like something was happening a second ago, but then it wasn't happening anymore. So... Now I know this car hasn't been sat anywhere near as long, so I'm, you know, 
I'm not too fussed about just dumping a load of fuel down it just to see if the spark and everything is working, if the timing's good, all that kind of thing, and all the leads are in the right place. So let's just spill all that fuel all over the side. Great. And we'll see if she barks off now. That did try to go then, didn't it? That definitely did. Uh, but the battery is dead. Fuck. So I'm going to get the jump leads, I'm going to spin the preset round, put it on, and we'll try it again. Let's just talk about jump leads for a second. Jump leads are a bit of a black magic, aren't they? This set that I've got here, right, I've had for um, a, a long time. I can't even remember what the first car must have been that I started with these things, but they're absolutely ratty and they're covered in tape and just, they're just, you know, not in good nick, but they work so well. And I've seen some jump leads that are uh, like, you know, about that thick and they cost about six grand and, you know, look at the state of that, like, it's just, and, and you hook them up and they do nothing. Which is weird, isn't it? Anyway, let's get this hooked up to the car. Right, place your bets now, I suppose. She's firing, but she's not wanting to run, which is understandable. Um, I don't know if there's any fuel in the tank, so I don't know if there's any fuel getting to the car, but it's just this. It's a little bit deja vu, isn't it, again? I'm just going to put a tiny little bit more on. Yeah, maybe. I'm tempted to empty this into the tank, but let's put a tiny bit more down there and see if we can get it idling for at least a, a couple of seconds. And if it does, we'll dump this down there.
she runs! I was a little bit worried for a second. I thought the timing might be out or something because it was backfiring, but I don't know what that was from. Um, I reckon the spark plugs are probably a bit minging. Uh, so I'm just going to put this down the tank now um, and then I'm going to take the spark plugs out and we'll have a little look at those, analyse them and just see if there's anything that can be done to improve them there and then we'll have another go. get into these spark plugs. Now I've bought an array of, I don't know, metal. I've bought an array of tools with me because they look like a funny size. Oh no, that should be right. So I'm starting with number three cylinder. I don't know why, I just am. Um, Possibly because that looks like the easiest one. I wonder what I'd be doing today if I wasn't here. Probably have a, a wife and kids and... I thought spark plugs were supposed to be mag magnetic. Are they not? No. Why aren't you coming out of your hole? Yes, you are. There you go. Okay. It's black. It's sooty. To be honest, it's exactly like a spark plug should look. Just looks like it's been burning a load of fuel, been running really rich. There's no oil on it. It's not wet, which is eh, interesting because I just poured a load of petrol down there, but... Yeah, no oil on it or anything, so, I mean, that one can go back in, really. If they're all like that, we're, we could be on for a winner there. The gap does look a little bit short on it. Ah, it's okay. We'll compare it to the others, eh? Put it this way. I've seen worse. I changed worse today, actually. What I've been doing before I came here is I did a service. Oh! On a Toyota Yaris, supposed to have lifelong plugs that never need changing, and uh, they were all well, well overdue for a change. Go in the hole. There you go. Talked to the correct setting. Right, just going to give number one a go. <laughs> Enjoying this? Interesting, right. I don't know if you can see there, but there's practically no gap. So that electrode has, has bent itself over. I don't think it's done. It's not a mechanical force that's hit it, it's just the heat and stuff and heat cycles that have bent it over like that. So I'm going to re gap that now using a flathead screwdriver. Uh, and weeks of experience. There you go. Just to get that looking roughly like the other one. But that will have really, really hampered the running because if it can't spark properly, then it ain't going to go. But again, condition wise, fantastic, you know. Let's put that one back in. But I do think because of that, Seeing that one there, we are going to have to check them all now, which is fine. I wanted to check them all anyway. I 
One really handy thing about having this car I've just has just occurred to me is if the fuel pumps and stuff are the same and I get any problems with that blue Mercedes, which I've nicknamed by the way, that blue Mercedes is called Peter, but it's not Peter how you think it's spelled, it's P-I-T-A, which is Peter, which stands for pain in the, uh, oh, you guessed it. Right, number two spot, plug. Hey, yeah. What's the gap going to be like on this and will it come to life when I twist that key? Please just give it to me. Right, number two. Not bad. Gap's all right. Not the best, but again, just running rich, burning fuel, which is exactly what you'd expect, really. Just going to prise it apart a tiny little bit to try and make it match the others a little bit more. There you go. Do you remember, like, uh, when you were first sort of working on carts and people were trying to teach you things and, like, your dad or your granddad or your uncle or whoever, uh, uncle in my case, uh, Uncle Mike. Very knowledgeable with cars and motorbikes. Taught me an awful lot. But he always did say, oh, you've got to get your feeler gauges out and you've got to get the correct spark and the correct gap. And it's a load of rubbish really, isn't it? You've just got to make sure you get a nice strong spark. You get a nice strong spark, then that's uh, all you need to make your car run really, isn't it? Okay, last one, one at the back. Number four, that one came out a little bit too easy, didn't it? Stubborn old mule. Okay. And another slightly wet plug, which is great. That's what I wanted to see. I know it's getting the Fantastic condition though, again, but might, yeah, just push that gap up a touch. There we go, just want to be able to get the blade of the screwdriver in there and then I'm happy. Uh, but they're in good nick. It's interesting that two of them were wet and the other two were dry. Now what that could mean is that a couple of the injectors are not letting as much fuel through as the others, which has got potential. So if I could really be bothered, um, and we did have running issues with this, the injectors are fairly easy to get to there. So you can get like a injector sort of test rig set up which is essentially a load of clear bottles and you're firing the injectors into there. And that just tells you that the Bosch unit here, the, the Jetronic thing is doing everything exactly the same because you should be filling the bottles up, the jars up at the same rate. So if it comes to it, we could do that because that sounds like a fun video for you to watch. Uh, not necessarily a fun video for me to make. Right then, done that, put fuel in. Should we see if she cranks again? She really wants
wants to run. She does. I can hear her fighting spirit. <laughs> Come on, come on baby, you can do it. Come on baby. Come on, come on. Listen, I know you're tired. I know you I know you're sleepy, I know you want your bed. I'm here to help. Very nearly. Uh, see if there's any fuel coming through. I can hear fuel. I can smell fuel. I think she wants to run, you know. I think she just needs that little bit of persuasion. So let's, uh, should we keep trying her, eh? I don't think there's anything else for it. I think she's, she's, she's ready. I'll switch the Passat on though, eh?
Sorry about that. Just got a little bit excited. Excited for a couple of reasons. One, it runs, and two, two, it seems to be running off its own juices. Which would indicate some sort of fuel pump working. Um, there's definitely a little bit of a leak in a radiator there, though, but that's fine. Um, I can hear that pushing a bit of uh, fuel in when I press it down, which is fun, isn't it? Okay, so what next? Now, it's running. I don't want to run it for too long because I don't want to get it hot without putting some water in. So I'm just going to fill that water up there, make sure that it stands a chance of at least cooling itself down. It's running potentially on three. I don't, it just doesn't sound like it's running right. Uh, and I can't quite get it to idle. So I'm going to fill that up with water and then we're going to have a little play with it again. See if I can get it running again. I need it to idle because if it can idle, I can come out and pull the spark plug leads off and that sort of thing and try and find the cylinder that isn't firing and then sort of diagnose it back from there. But all in all, I mean, it's going better than the other one, isn't it? If you're enjoying this kind of thing, if this is your bag, uh, you know, and I'm not here to judge, um, then you know if you want to see me do it again there's three things i want you to do subscribe like put the notifications on four if you really really want you can give me a comment and let me know what you liked about it potentially what you didn't like about it not that there's going to be anything there surely um and uh i'll do more videos uh, because this is uh you know this is a bit of fun isn't it something to do when you're not working and it's great to see these old cars come back to life, isn't it? But we're not quite there yet with this. Let's get some more work done. Have a drink. Have a break. Oh, just get some of that in there. Doesn't have to be all of it, just some of it. drinking you are drinking aren't you you are drinking aren't you you're thirsty boy have some more then full had enough I'm going to do a little bit of investigation now and just check if the uh, timing order on the hoses is right because someone was messing with the dizzy cap before this and it sounds like a timing issue. It doesn't sound like a fuel issue, it sounds like a timing issue. Um, so, because you can hear a little bit of backfiring and stuff. So I'm going to uh, check what the timing order should be, make sure it matches up with the distributor cap uh, and then, yeah, go from there. Okay, so it's missing and I've just pulled number one spark plug off. That's number one spark plug has got, I think, it did have anyway. Let's try number two. Okay, so number two is keeping it going. Oh, let's try and fire it up again. What about number three? Number three was keeping it going. What about 
put on them before. No dice. So I wonder what happens now. Hey. <laughs> I am sometimes clever. And then what about so the firing order was wrong, so someone's been messing around with that cat. When they obviously might have tried to but it didn't work, whatever. Um, and they got these leads the wrong way around. So the leads are now the right way around and listen to that man, that is ace. Let's have a rev. Happy. happy, happy, happy. That sounds great as well. There's no bad top end noises. There's no bad bottom end noises. Everything works well here. I'm just going to hook a multimeter up to the battery just to make sure that the charge machine is doing the charging. And that's it. Let's uh, have a look at the rest of the car. Let's see if the gearbox works because it's a Mercedes and undoubtedly that won't work. Um, and then let's see if she moves under her own steam and maybe even, maybe even go for a spin! Am I getting too excited? No. Let's have a listen again. What a machine! Okay, folks. That weird thing is weird. Um, she's running. Sounds great, apart from a bit of a blowing exhaust, but that's the old more do you want to know? So I'm currently in neutral. There's a couple of things I haven't tested, so let's test them now, eh? Power steering. Apart from the steering wheel being disgusting, that is a win. Okay, now the ABS light is on. I don't know why that is. There was brake fluid, so let's just press the brake pedal and see if we've actually got any brakes. We've got a brake pedal and it doesn't sound like anything's exploded, any lines. So that's exciting. Okay. Oil pressure has dropped down to around about 1.1, which is enough, isn't it? How do I get this on? Oh, look at this! Captain's armchair, yeah? I can see me cruising down the six foot cruise the um, motorway. Okay, let's not delay this any longer. Do we have gears? Let's try dry. Cross, cross your fingers. Turned it off.
I mean, we can't say any fairer than that, can we? Let's have a proper look at this thing, look. It's a good looking car. You know, back in its day, this would have been a real sort of executive's flying machine, wouldn't it, you know? Up and down the highways of the UK and maybe trips abroad for business. You know, look at these tyres, man. You've got uni-oils. Look how much treads on that. That'll pass an MOT, that tyre. Oh, man. What a machine. I'm in love. It's gone really well. Have you seen this as well? It's got a hole in the roof. good isn't it really good so i think the sensible option is just to lock the passat up and uh maybe take this for a trip uh a back to the workshop and b maybe to get some petrol in it and take it for an mot officer oh thank you this like seat belt butler thing is very American and very confusing. Uh, right, let's go. Worried this car might be a little bit too powerful, you know. Got air in the tyres. Got love in my heart. Got a light on the dash. Got indicators. Yeah. Do I really want to try the washer? I'm scared to try the washer. Look at this thing go, man. Look how chilled I am. It's like light as a feather steering. This is just the one, isn't it? I wonder if I've got a second gear. need to be changed a little bit but and maybe a new wiper blade i think the petrol station sells wiper blades shall i get one right. it's not it's not go it's not go crazy over here. Uh, i wish i hadn't done that because i can't really see now but hopefully that'll dry fairly quickly That temperature, just above 90. Fuel pressure goes up when the RPMs go up. Thank you. 
I did just try and get the uh, wiper blade. Look at that, half a tank of juice. Yeah, try and get the wiper blade um, off just to... The handbrake works as well, this is ridiculous. Just to change it then, um, but I need a, a leverage device, which I ain't got with me. Right then, folks. kind of how 
I would like these revival videos to go. That was pretty good. We're back at base, nobody died, everybody's safe. And what a machine. It's difficult to know what to do with this car. The time and money to get it probably up and running and MOT'd, you could argue would not be worth it. So what I'm possibly going to do is offer it out there. If you like the look of it, you can buy it. It's yours. I'm going to offer it out there as it is, running and driving. But I might do one thing. I might take these alloy wheels. Oh, that's very hot, possibly sticking. I'm going to take these alloy wheels and I'm going to put them on the blue one outside. Because I think they look awesome on that blue one. And the tyres are good on a couple of them as well. So, uh, yeah. That's probably the plan, I think. If you've enjoyed this episode and you want to see more stuff like this, then listen, look, I'll do it. You know, I will do it. I've got lots of other machines around me as well that I'll do other videos on as time goes on. We'll be doing more videos on the Land Rover and all sorts. So just subscribe, man, and they'll come to you. You know, you don't have to have everything at once, do you? You know, just subscribe, like, tell us if you think we should do anything different to this than just sell it as it is you know there's no demolition derbies in the area otherwise that could have been quite fun uh, but yeah that's it i'll see you in the next episode which is possibly going to be getting the blue one properly up and running once the parts have arrived that i've ordered uh thanks for watching goodbye